Jim Paff is with us right now, the Conservative Caucus, and uh, welcome to the program. Never a dull moment. We've had a big week so far. We had uh, the debate, which well, we'll talk about that here in a little bit, and what, uh, if anything, uh, difference it will make yeah. uh, in the days ahead. We had the anniversary of September 11th, uh, and an interesting moment uh, again, with uh, President Trump meeting uh, Kamala Harris at one point, they shake hands. Biden's next to her. Uh, Bloomberg is in the middle. Schumer's down the line. J.D. Vance is with him. Eric Trump in the back. It's a really interesting scene there, and uh, and and what all that means, uh, and more. But there has never been a more critical election. We're right in the middle of this, Jim. I think. I know we say it every time it rolls around, the most important election of our life. But I think this really is, and it might even be, talking to President Trump himself, he said, maybe even in the history of the nation. Well, if you want to know how serious <clears throat> that is, and I've tried in 30 years of handicapping politics while I work work in campaigns and do the various things I've done. I've yeah. tried to really resist the, this is the most important <laughs> election in history thing. I really do believe it applies. Just go, just look at what's going on down in Brazil. They've shut down X uh, just by the order of some judge. And uh, they've been, uh, and, and of course, Facebook and Google and them, they're, they're complying. Uh, we are very close to that point. Why do I say that? Because it's already happening to a certain degree. It's already growing here because yes. we know that from the Twitter files. We know that from the Missouri v. Biden case, which showed a bunch of uh, subpoenaed information related to Facebook that was saying the same things we learned in the Twitter files. The federal government has been attempting to stop free speech in this country, utilizing willing actors in our social media companies based here in the United States uh, for um, probably a full decade by now. And you've got radical uh, censorship happening with those organizations as well. My friend Peter Schweitzer documented it in a, a movie back in 2014 called The Creepy Line where he, he, he showed specifically how this is happening. So this has been building for a long time. We're on the cusp of it. And if Kamala Harris is president, she's absolutely shutting us all down to the very, every extent that she can and, and as, aggressively, as aggressively as she'll be allowed. So let me ask you, I mean, because these are very serious times, uh, very serious issues. And uh, I, I will say, though, even though they are serious, like the polling and some of the things we've seen recently <laughs> indicates that some people, at, at least it feels like people are waking up. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg coming out admitting that, that he was a part of all this and didn't like that to me says, well, maybe Mark knows something. Why would he come out and say these things? Uh, if not, is there is there a bit of are we hitting that tipping point? Are we getting to that moment that I, in terms of the outcome of the election? I, I think so. And and even though the debate, perf the debate performance, which we'll talk about, it wasn't the most exciting thing that I ever watched, but mm -hmm. uh, except for his closing statement, which was fantastic. But what we are noticing through the polls is that people don't trust Kamala Harris. They don't trust her on the changes that she's made in policy. For example, the fracking is, is issue is maybe the most notable that she said she was going to shut down all fracking. She said it repeatedly and clearly in the past. And now suddenly she says that she's not on board with that, but she hasn't changed her values. People don't trust her. Now, Donald Trump's got to go close the deal, but there's no doubt that even after the debate, momentum is still in Donald Trump's favor. If he can just keep the message of the economy and the struggles that people are going through directly because of Kamala Harris and Joe Biden in the forefront of his discussion. Yeah, we talked about this the other day, but uh, a fantastic point uh, with the closing. Um, I, I'll get into some of the, the things that I, that I noticed and maybe some of the things that you noticed here in a second. But this closing message if people see anything from this debate, hopefully it is this. So she just started by saying she's going to do this, she's going to do that, she's going to do all these wonderful things. Why hasn't she done it? She's been there for three and a half years. They've had three and a half years to fix the border. They've had three and a half years to create jobs and all the things we talked about. Why hasn't she done it? That is a fantastic question. And you know, I'm watching. I don't know about you, Jim, but I'm watching some of the 
uh, the, the panels that they've done, CBS, CNN did one, Dr. Phil, of all people, did one. They're talking to these voters who have watched the debate and their reaction. And I'm seeing a lot of these people, independents, undecided that 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 really that resonated with them. Not only that, but they came to this debate looking for answers about her policies and what she was going to do to make things better. They're obviously feeling the pain. She's gaslighting him, and uh, and and I I think there's a big disconnect there with them. Uh, what did you, what did you make about that? I agree with you 100. percent What the only thing that Democrats have to run on the only really the only thing that Kamala Harris has to run on that even gets anywhere with voters is this visceral issue about abortion. Yeah. And she attempted to repeat it last night. And it is a very visceral issue. And to be candid, and sadly, in my opinion, the pro-life causes is in the descendancy in recent years rather than the ascendancy, even with the Dobbs decision. In terms of the minds of the general American public, the polls show that people are not as pro-life as they used to be. Now, that can easily change over time. But I'm making that point to say that's all she's got to run on, killing babies. I mean, that's it. We just want to be able to kill babies. The Ralph Northam, uh, governor of former governor of Virginia, uh, quote, where he was literally talking about the doctor and the mother need to make their decision even after the baby's born, whether they're going to keep it or not. It, it's infanticide. It's crazy. And she had no uh, credible answer to that. But this is what they believe they can use to win because they believe it happened in 2022. Other than that, there's nothing that she can discuss that resonates with people. And the January 6th thing that she brought up last night, that ain't going to fly. What Donald Trump said in his closing argument, especially right there at the beginning, if he would just repeat it over and over again, you said you were, you said you're going to do something. Let's just look at what you did. And you could never, and you're going to do the same thing. It just keep that message pounding over and over again. And it's a winning message if he can do it. It'll be interesting. We're going to watch polls. We're going to see how things uh, swing. I, I watched it last night. I thought she did well enough. They may not ask for another debate, that there may not be another debate. But then they asked for one right out of the gate. And Trump kind of said, like, well, I, I feel like I won. I don't know that I really want another debate. I may have to consider that. Of course, he'll he'll probably <laughs> do it. He can't back down from a fight. But one of the things that uh, we speak with a guy that's uh, from Michigan here, writes for the New York Post and, and uh, has his own podcast, and um, he made the point. He said last the, – the debate was, more than anything, another assassination. He said a political assassination attempt. He said they all came together, but he said they failed. They brought everything they had, and they only nicked his ear. And I thought – that was interesting. I said, there's a very good way to put it. He said, you know, what we watched last night was him surviving. It's not that, yeah. that, that could he win or did she win, but he survived. And, boy, that was really something. And more so, Jim, what do you think about the mainstream media and ABC and the moderators exposing themselves in ways that will be I, I, I just disastrous to them in the future? The American people see those obvious attempts to twist the debate in a certain direction. And they do recognize that ABC last night was attempting to set Kamala Harris up. Listen, I, I tweeted out, I posted out on X a uh, statement that says they just went to abortion, climate change, all these things, and, and, and not even the economy. Someone pointed out the very, well, what are you talking about? The very first question was the economy. Yeah, it was. It was on inflation. And they quickly moved the debate in the direction that Kamala attempted to move it, and they just went with her the rest of the way. That was the design. But there's an interesting poll that is out there, and just to give you a sense of effect, CNN did a post-debate poll, even them, where they showed that, oh, yeah, Kamala won. But they have, the numbers they have on the back end of what the American people really think, at least based upon their poll, are this. Who do you think is going to be able to handle something better? On the economy, Kamala Harris, 35 percent, Trump, 55 percent. On immigration, Kamala Harris, 33 percent, Trump, 56 percent. On protecting democracy, whatever in the world that means, okay, so she has an edge, 49 to 50. But being commander in chief, 43 percent Kamala Harris, 49 percent um, 
uh, 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 Donald Trump. Uh, it's not penetrating. And yeah. so I would agree with the analysis. They nicked him in the ear. I mean, yeah, he did survive this. He didn't do himself any favors because he did take the bait with her a few times. And I was very disappointed by that personally. Yeah. But uh, the reality is that the American people are not dumb. They see when they're being played. They're slowing the uptake sometimes because they're just out living their lives. They're not thinking about this all day long like you and me. But uh, but they do get it in uh, at the end of the day. And they don't like it when people try to manipulate them. If they feel that they're being manipulated, they will react and in a negative way against those making that attempt. Jim Path, the conservative caucus coming up. You guys have a big, uh, big anniversary, in fact. Yeah, you know, uh, conserv the conservative caucus is the oldest conservative grassroots organization in the country, founded by Howard Phillips in 1974. We're celebrating that in Northern Virginia and Leesburg, Virginia area on October 13th, and Rudy Giuliani's coming to speak. I actually have a lot of friends related to this Brazil thing, and I may bring them to give people an update on that also. I'm still working that out. I don't know yet, but people can go to theconservativecaucus.org slash 50 gala to sign up, or they can just go to the front page of the website theconservativecaucus.org to find out more. If they happen to be in the Northern Virginia area or want to get there, it's going to be a hugely excellent event. And uh, I think people would enjoy it if, if they're interested in coming. We might have to have you back on to talk about Brazil because that's that what's happening there is uh canary in the coal mine and uh, love to dig into that a little bit more for sure. Well, I've got friends in the National Congress there um, through my private efforts and also our efforts through, through the conservative caucus. We've tried to put some light on that. We've had a couple press conferences with members of their national Congress who were up here talking to folks in DC. And, uh, and then I have two very close friends is how I got involved in this two very close friends, Alan Dos Santos and Paulo Figueredo who had huge audiences and were literally just shut down by uh, the uh, the Supreme Court justice down there that shut wow. down X recently. This is a big issue. I got involved in it very deeply, so I think it's an important discussion we need to have because it's where we're going if we don't stop it in its tracks right now. Yeah, serious stuff. Jim Path, the Conservative Caucus, and find out more at theconservativecaucus.org. We'll put the links up in the stack as well. Thanks for taking the time to be here with us today, Jim. Great to be with you, Justin. Thanks.